Um, today, I want to give you a talk about how Cube Biotech contributes to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, Cube Biotech is located in uh, Monheim, near the Rhine, where we have our production facilities, and uh, our Cube Inc. in USA, in Wayne, where we have our sales facility. And additionally, we have a crystallization facility in Hamburg, and two distributors, one in China and one in Japan. We are for almost 10 years on the market, have until now 20 employees and have a worldwide distribution. Cube Biotech is since five years market leader for membrane protein service and products. Is scientist owned, scientist driven, and we are a manufacturer for high quality, effective, cost effective research tools. The Cube Biotech management team, we are three of them is Dr. Ron Fabis with he has a huge experience in chemistry and especially in protein chemistry. And there he develops a new uh, chromatro chromatography techniques in uh, magnetic beads or agarose. We have uh, Barbara Mertens, which is a biochemist. And uh, she's doing sales and marketing. In addition, she has a huge experience in um, doing cell culture, especially hex cells and insect cells. And my name is Dr. Jan Kovicek. I'm biochemist and doing business development for Cube Biotech and doing all the stuff what about membrane proteins. That means purification, stabilization, and de we are developing every time new techniques. Um, the um, product portfolio of Cube Biotech uh, consists of a protein service and a products for protein work. We have now, since about these 10 years, done 100, 150 custom service, um, membrane protein custom service, and we learn a lot from our customers. So we know the customer needs. And these customer needs um, is, drives our product portfolio. And as an example, in the last years, we established an antibody purification tech and Rotec to purify membrane proteins, which really helps even in the expression, so you're getting high amount. We have a patent protected superior his protein matic, which binds up to 100 milligram um, protein. And um, for this talk, very important is our membrane protein stabilization technique. So we stabilize the membrane proteins for our customers. And in this case, we enable the customers, because the question is what our customers do with our membrane proteins. They are doing antibody generation, ligand screening. They are building up diagnostic assays. They are doing ligand screening with SPR. At the end, they are doing ELISAs. And some of these techniques are only possible because the, we have established these new methods and we can purify membrane proteins without detergent. Yeah. We come to the point what, how Cube Biotech contributes the COVID-19 pandemic. We first had a closer look on what's, how the infection is going on. So we see in the middle the virus. The virus had in the top on the first day the spike protein. This spike protein consists of three monomers and is about 700 kilodalton big. And this spike protein is very important to bind in the first contact of a lung cell to bind ACA2. You have these three membrane proteins, which are really important for the infection of the SARS-CoV-2 of the lung cell. You have the protease. All, three, all of these three membrane proteins we are expressing at Cubiotech, and we are expressing wild types. So we don't put a mutation on. They are wild type exactly how they are on the virus or in our lung cells. In this talk, we have a closer look on the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. On the left side, you see a wonderful picture. I think it's a cryo picture or something like a schematic view from the MPE of biophysics. And you see that the trimeric spry protein going is in this direction. It's fixed with the hydrophobic regions in the membrane surface of the virus. And you see everywhere are spike proteins and try to get in contact to some receptor to infect, affect our lung cells. So in the decision with which antigen we try to produce and to go on the market for our customers, we have a long discussion. And at the end, we go up with the wild type. So you see these, the wild type functional trimer consists of three, of three monomers, which are then 
and the top are coming together. And here in the ground is a hydrophobic surface. It's the same when, you, when the proteins are fixed on the surface on the virus. Why we are choosing the wild type protein? It's, we will see a few seconds later what, what, our, what other companies are taking for antigens. We heard that maybe some of S1 region is very important. But we still think that the wild type cost protein at all is very important to detect antibodies in the blood and to make a test of it. Because when you are looking on literature, on the SARS literature, which is very close to our COV2 spike protein, then we find out that the three, that the three monomers have an interaction together. Yeah? They are building a motive for antibodies in the blood. And additionally, we find out that from the SARS cough surface, um, these conformational changes are also required to bind SARS cough neutralization antibodies. So, for future, exactly for therapies with antibodies, when you, um, as is, this could be very, very important. So, we decide to go with a whole protein. In the ground, you see that many other companies are going only with the top with only one, so they have dimers, monomers, very small antigen, and one the whole monomer in place. Yeah. Okay. On the next slide, I mentioned that um, we have a huge portfolio to stabilize membrane proteins. This you see on the next on this slide here. So we stabilize the membrane protein at all, not only in detergent. We stabilize it one times with DIPMA. DIPMA is a technology we can only find at Cube Biotech, and we are producing this DIPMA synthetic copolymers, and you directly can solubilize your membrane protein without the detergent. You never see. Additionally, all lipids which are required for maybe functional are still on the membrane. On the other side, you have the membrane-based nanodisc, so that the MSP-based nanodisc. With these, you can stabilize membrane protein too. So we established we established the purification, the expression, the purification, and go now to the and, and show our customers that it's possible to work with the whole protein and don't work with the part. These all three stabilized membrane proteins, COV2 spike protein trimer, is possible to order in milligram, may enable in gram quantities. And our customers are now able to do antibody generation, cryo-EM, to look at the structure, to look at ligand screening, diagnostic assay, and especially you can do ELISAs with that, especially with proteins which have never saw detergent. Yeah. And for Q-Biotech, normally this, we are selling our um, proteins to the customers, and they are doing all these things I mentioned before, but this time we choose to do cooperation with Dr. Forbe Laboratories in Neuss. And we started this one and, a half, one and a half months before, and we try to, and because Dr. Forbe Laboratories has a 30 years huge experience in doing and establishing such a test for allergic, allergic reaction or autoimmune diseases, we go with them and we now together establish, establish such a ELISA. What is missing still, we are need positive serums to show that the ligand we are choose for such a test is very specific. So it's without no problem to detect EGG in the serums of the patients, of the positive patients, and we are looking now to establish EGM in EGA. The next slide show that this our goal is not is, but our goal is not to establish an ELISA. Our goal is to establish an LFA test because with such an LFA test, you need only 20 minutes to get a result. So here comes the serum of the patients and 20 minutes after it, you can see directly in the test line that if you have, um, get, if you have had the infection half year before or not. We've done a correlation until now and the EGG ELISA test gives the same result as the EG rapid test, which only takes 20 minutes. When you, so we are not pretty sure, but it could be that you really see it with your eyes and you don't, need, you don't have to detect it. Yeah? But this, I think, we will see in the next three months. And this is exactly the case. I think we will need about three months to evaluate such an LFR test. 
and I think then we can bring it to the market. So what we are looking now is still for more serum samples and this we are in, in contact um, with the university clinic in Cologne and with doctors and to get such a serums and to evaluate and to make such a LFR test um, um, for, finalized to the community. Yeah, this is, I think, everything. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions now, and or write us an email or go on our website. Thank you very much.